So today I'm here to talk about my most anticipated releases for 2024, at least of the science fiction and fantasy books that have so far been published. If you missed it, I did the same thing for horse. So I'm going to have that video linked down below and in the cards, so you can check it out. And a few things before we get started. First, all these dates and months are subject to change because as soon as I record one of these videos, the publishers let us know that there are delays. So keep that all in mind. I'm going to try to only talk about adult fiction in this video, but sometimes with new releases, it's hard to tell whether or not a book is YA or adult. So I think these are adult. I'm not sure that is my focus of my channel. And as well, I want to mention that I'm not going to include any sequels. There are tons of sequels when it comes to science fiction fantasy that I'm very excited about. They're coming out next year. But I feel like most people already know about those books. So I'd like to focus this video on books that are either standalones or starts of new series. All that being said, let's get started. First, let's start in January with Exordia by Seth Dickinson. And this is a sci-fi novella that follows a woman who is described as a refugee, a survivor of genocide, and also an office worker. Kind of a strange grouping of descriptors, but that's within the synopsis at least. In the story, something happens and they have to group up with other civilians, scientists, and soldiers to try to save the world. However, they have to battle their own demons in order to do so. That's the basic premise as I understand it. The premise itself sounds really vague and I don't really know what it's about. I'll be honest, when it comes to anticipated releases, it's hard to find a lot of science fiction that's already been announced, I feel like most of the books that are coming out these days are fantasy, or at least they get all the marketing and press around them. So this is one I want to check out because it is first and foremost science fiction, but also because of the author. If you're not aware that the same author who wrote the fantasy series that I love, The Trader Baru Cormorant and its sequels, love those books. It is so smart and cutting. And so because of my love for that series, I will read anything this author puts out. So I don't really know what this book is about, but it sounds great and I'm here for it. Next in January is The Tusks of Extinction by Ray Nyler. Of all the books on this list, this one might be my most anticipated. It sounds amazing. I have previously read this author before. They are the same author who wrote A Mountain in the Sea, which is all about octopus. And so this is another one that kind of deals with the manipulation of biology. And so within this story here, we follow a future where Russia has found the technology, the ability to bring mammoths back to life using frozen DNA. And so we bring in the scientist who is there to help the mammoths basically learn how to be mammoths. The idea is that while they are brought back to life, they don't have the socialization you normally would have when a baby is born with their mother. Instead, they have to try to figure that all out. This one is described as a techno thriller and I think it's going to lean into some of those conversations around nature versus nurture or just a warning of what happens when humans play God. So I'm hoping it's going to give me similar feelings to Jurassic Park. I don't necessarily think it's going to lean into the same horror elements necessarily, but again I love the author's previous work. In my mind that was a sleeper hit of the year. It was so smart, so interesting to deal with hyper intelligent octopuses and while I don't think these mammoths are going to be hyper smart, I think that the author just does amazing things, creates really good conversations, and just writes a kind of really highly intelligent science fiction I'm looking for today. And this one is guaranteed to be on my favorites of the year list. I'm going to say that right now. You will see it in my 2024 favorites of the year a year from now. Next is The Sunlit Man by Brandon Sanderson. Now I realize that those of you that back the original campaign, the Kickstarter, already probably have copies, but for us late people out there that did not participate in the Kickstarter, the physical copies of these books are going to become available to the rest of us in January. So this is a story that takes place in the Cosmo universe that I have enjoyed. I've read several of the books in there. However, this one takes place in the far-flung future, which is always a part of the Cosmere universe I've been interested in. They've always hinted that they're going to do books that are set in more of a futuristic place. And so in this one, we follow a man who is known as the Nomad. He wanders around from planet to planet. I believe he world hops, which I think is a Sanderson phrase that I don't really understand very well. But within the story, you follow him. He used to have a purpose. He used to have comrades. And now he just wanders around. Possibly people are chasing him. And then within the story, particularly focuses on him hopping to this one planet where there is this tyrant ruling over these people and they're the rebels obviously rebelling against that body and so he's forced to try to help them out. I don't believe he understands the language or the culture or anything so he's kind of thrown in there. It sounds like an interesting premise. I do think that Sanderson is one who writes just a really engaging story 
story or knows how to do that. And so I will absolutely try it out. I haven't caught up and read all of the Sanderson work out there. There is a lot of it. But when it comes to something that leans into science fiction, this one definitely caught my attention. And again, I'll read it once it's available to people like me. Moving on to February, we have The Tainted Cup by Robert Jackson Bennett. And this, I believe, is the start of a series. This is a fantasy mystery story that begins with this officer who was found dead. The way that they are appearing to be suggests that they have been murdered. So there is a detective that is called in along with their assistant. So this detective is someone who is brilliant. They are a very strange personality, but they make amazing connections and so are brought in for their expertise. And then they have an assistant whose job it is to take notes, to follow them around and assist them. And their assistant kind of knows that this person that they follow is very eccentric and aren't entirely sure about them. But as the story progresses, I understand that they start to make a lot of great connections and really prove their brilliance to their assistant. And then the story goes from there, obviously trying to solve the case of this supposedly murdered person. I'm really excited for this one as someone who loves Sherlock Holmes and Watson. It's clear within the setup of the story that these characters are meant to be reminiscent of the classic detective and their assistant here. And I'm completely here for it. I love eccentric detectives. I love those that are able to make connections that don't seem obvious to the lay person like myself. And I just find it to be a really interesting setup. I do love mysteries. I don't read them and review them as much as I used to on my channel. But growing up, that is what I read. I loved mystery stories. And so bring in a speculative element back into the mystery genre, something I already love, just sounds great. I've read this author before. I really love Foundry Side and its sequels. So I'm hoping that this will be a great start to a new series that I can hopefully binge through as the other books come out. Next, we have Fathom Folk by Eliza Chan. And that's a story that is compared to the Greenbone Saga as well as the Bone Shard Daughter. Both of these are books and series that I really enjoy, so I'm very interested for that comparison. This is an Orbit title, and I tend to really like Orbit's fantasy, so they pretty much are always a sure bet with me. This one is hard to describe on camera without reading the synopsis word for word. I understand that it's set in a city where the water levels have risen, the city is flooded, and so everyone has to get up high. In the story, we follow a water dragon, a half siren, and a sea witch, and it just sounds a really bizarre story with so many elements to it. And again, it's really one that I probably won't be able to give you a proper synopsis for until I try it out for myself, but I'm here for it. It sounds great. The cover is beautiful, which I know is not important, but the cover is beautiful. So I definitely want to try it out once it's released. Next up is Twice Lived by Joma West. And this is a really unique speculative fiction story that follows two individuals that exist in two different worlds, two different versions of Earth, but they are considered to be one person. I believe they go back and forth between these two existences with with families and friends and have to coexist and eventually they need to try to find a solution for this. This is one I'll be honest that I want to pick up because it sounds really similar to the anime movie I love called Your Name. If you haven't seen it you need to go watch it and so if this story has a similar premise to that I am obsessed. I love stories that involve characters that are kind of linked together and have to kind of puzzle things out and world hopping all of that just sounds right up my alley. It sounds really intriguing and again, it's something unique. And you're gonna hear me say this over again on my channel, but when it comes to science fiction fantasy, I want a story I haven't read before. And while this sounds similar to a movie I've watched, the premise is something I don't think I've ever read and it sounds just what I'm looking for. Now, moving on to March, we have The Dead Cat Tale Assassins by P. D. Jelly Clark. And this is one where I know very little about it. I know that it involves gods and assassins, and the premise actually states that no, there are no cats involved in the story. It's just what the assassins are called. This is one, again, that it just has a really in intriguing cover, intriguing title to the story, and gives very little details. But it's an author I've read before and really enjoyed a lot of their work. They tend to write different, really diverse, unique stories, things that I haven't read before that don't necessarily lean to the same tropes I've read over and over again. And while there are no cats involved, I am here for assassins. It sounds like a lot of fun, really unique, and yeah, just hopefully I enjoy it because I am going into this one with high expectations, despite not knowing much about what it's gonna be. Next up is Cascade Failure, and this is a science fiction speculative type story that follows a future world where it is controlled by this corporation, this guild, and this labor union that all fight for control. Within the story, there's a distress call, and when they go to investigate, they discover something horrible has happened and possibly more horrible things are to come. The synopsis, again, in my mind is all over the place. There's so much they're trying to pack in, 
and it doesn't really make sense entirely to me until I read it for myself. But again, when it comes to new releases or upcoming releases, it's so much harder to find out about science fiction. And so this one is on my radar because of the fact that it has those elements to it. It's more speculative in nature and it sounds interesting. I do have a background in HR, so anything that does involve labor unions and conflict and disputes is actually right up my alley. I just don't talk about it a lot on this channel. So it's something that I'm definitely gonna try out. I have no idea how it's going to execute this all because again, the synopsis sounds very ambitious, but do I wanna try it? Will I report back? Absolutely. And then in April, we have The Practice, The Horizon, and The Chain. This is a really unique science fiction story, again, where we follow a boy who is working as a sort of indentured slave on this mining ship, and then he gets the opportunity to be trained or educated by this professor, so she takes him under his wing and teaches him and starts to unlock his abilities, and so the story goes from there. This one is compared to Ursula K. Le Guin, and I think it makes a lot of conversations around perhaps different people of different opportunities where certain people just get the chance to advance in their lives where other people do not based off of randomness of being selected and given a step up by someone else. I think it's going to go for that angle but I might be entirely mistaken and again with all these books as I attempt to give you poor synopsis I will come back with a proper review once I've actually read them but this one sounds again really different, really unique, really intriguing and I just, I have to read it for myself. And finally in June, we have Foul Days, and this is a story that follows a witch who is desperate to get out of this walled city because of her ex, and so she ends up selling her powers to get access to go away. However, she immediately regrets it. This is one that just sounds really kooky. It's compared to The Witcher, but suggesting what it would be like if Naomi Novak wrote something like this. I do believe this one is adult. I could see it being YA, so I might be mistaken there. But if it is written for adults, I do want to check it out. It just sounds, again, really unique and different, and I love something that kind of leans into more Slavic fantasy. It's not something I've read a whole bunch of and something I would definitely like to change. So if you're also interested in this one, I would love to hear your thoughts down below. So that's it for this quick video here. I'd love to know of the books I talked about. Which ones are you planning on checking out for yourself? And definitely come back to this video later on once these books are published so you can laugh at how terrible and incorrect all my synopsis are. This is one of my least favorite videos to film in terms of the preparation because I feel very uneducated to talk about books and tell you all about books that I haven't read. So again, if you're interested in these books, please consider sticking around. I will come back and read and review and give you all honest opinions about what I actually think of these books once I've had a chance to read them with my eyeballs. So at that point in time, I'm going to let you know which books are worth your time and which ones maybe you should get from the library or skip altogether. So if you're new to my channel and do want to have that experience and stick around, I do read horror thriller science fiction fantasy and don't forget to check out my most anticipated horror if you missed that. If you want to help me out with this video here you can give me a thumbs up, you can drop a comment even if just an emoji like a spaceship or a dragon and if you want to hit that little notification bell you won't miss any videos from me. Thanks so much for watching. Talk to you again soon. Okay bye bye.